Welcome back to MVD Studios, everyone. I am Mr. Blue Dot, and today I am trying to rank up on MTG Arena. Uh, I'm currently at Platinum Tier 4, and I'm going to be running my uh, Mute Light deck, which is uh, my variation of the Mutation Station. Here we have my first match with uh, Big Bad Bry, and I win because of a disconnect. Uh, yeah. You're seeing this at six times speed. I had to live it in real time. But, uh, there we go. First victory. Woo. Feels good. My next opponent here is Katsuo. And Katsuo is running a white blue angel deck. So I keep my original seven cards because there's uh, I'm hoping to get an island soon basically and I do which I should have thrown out because it would have left my options for both negate and eliminate open but um, uh, it was a small mistake and it doesn't cost me because I don't use either I pull a uh, Zagath Mamba, throw it out. And he pulls out a Fabled Passage, um, putting me at a slight mana advantage for the time being. I right, pull the Swamp. And I get that Pouncing Shore Shark out on the Mysterious Egg. Do a quick bit of damage. Hit him for six. Except he has that swift response. He takes out my Shore Shark. So I only hit him for one. throws out this uh, uh, griffin here, which I immediately eliminate, and take my one damage. And since I drew the murder, I go ahead and immediately uh, eliminate his warden as well attack again for another one damage. They start saying good game here. Not sure <laughs> what's going on. So can't attack or I'll lose my Mamba, which will leave me nothing to mutate onto. But I go ahead and negate his uh, attempted card draw there winged words. But he had another one in reserve, so he gets his cards. Or two of them, anyway. And he takes three damage. And I play my Archipelagor on my Mamba, which doesn't do enough damage to um, kill his... Uh, Angel up there, but um, gets it tapped for uh, you know, next turn. So and this is a position I don't really like to be in where I have nothing on the uh, battlefield or I only have one creature on the battlefield and I'm top decking it because uh, yeah, just like this he completely eliminates any offense or defense I might have had. My deck gives me an egg. Thank you, deck. And he throws out, uh, yep. Uh, another angel. And my deck gives me a land, which is, uh, as you can see, really needed right now. 
Yeah, I have nothing on the battlefield. I have no idea how I would come back from this at all. It's like... Uh, even pulling my worm wouldn't have uh, gotten rid of those because it only does two damage. And they're all flying so it couldn't attack them. Anyway. Or block them. So my deck gives me another land. I tell him good game. And he putzes around a little bit before finishing it. And that's my first defeat, so I'm right back where I started. And we're on to our third match versus AK Nod. I go ahead and keep my first seven cards here. And immediately play my Mamba. So I have something to mutate later. Maybe a couple uh, damage on these first few turns. I don't play my uh, egg because I have nothing to mutate onto it and I want to keep mana free for my unsubstantiate just in case. So I don't pull a land this time so now I'm at a land disadvantage and I just go ahead and keep my mana again. He throws out Gadrak, the Crown Scourge. Gadrak's a pretty awesome card. Um, it's cheap and it's powerful once uh, the artifact conditions are met. Until then, it's an extremely deadly blocker. Um, I throw out Polywog Symbiote since I didn't get a uh, land this time. And I'm really hoping for a land on my next draw so I can at least get like Pouncing Shore Shark out. Now that I have the reduced cost. And he throws out a Fabled Passage. And he throws out the Skyclave Shade. Immediately he sacrifices him, creates a token artifact. I get the land I was hoping for, so I go ahead and use it on, or go ahead and play uh, Pouncing Shore Shark on Mamba, and send Gadrick back to his hand. Get rid of my Mysterious Egg because uh, I, while the plus one counters every mutate are pretty nice, I don't think I'll uh, be able to get a good stack going on it, so. Might as well get rid of it, keep the swamp, and all the rest of my mutates. So I did a quick 5 damage there. And Gadrick comes back. I'm at a severe mana disadvantage right now. And he uses Murderous Rider to take out my Shore Shark. But. And I go ahead and take out Gadrick with the uh, um, Chittering uh, Harvester. Uh, honestly, I probably should have kept the Boot Nipper and gotten rid of something else like. Well, he hasn't really been playing spells that much, so Unsubstantiate might have been a good one, uh, considering my mana situation. Um, Boot Nipper would have given me something else to mutate onto. You know, plus a Death Touch creature. Uh, Demon's Disciple causes me to um, sacrifice my only creature on the board. I go ahead and play Dirge Bat. 
So now I have a blocker, which doesn't really matter because Gadrick can't uh, attack yet. He still needs one more artifact. Uh, he pulls Dull Priest of Oblivion, which brings back his Disciple, which makes me sacrifice my Dirge Bat, and again, I'm a defenseless. And now he has all four artifacts he needs to start attacking with Gadrick. He throws some more creatures out onto the field. I play my Pouncing Shore Shark since it's pretty much the only thing I can do at the moment. Uh, I might have been able to unsubstantiate, or uh, I could have unsubstantiated Gadrick, but um, it just would have been back out the next turn. I still wouldn't have anything on the board to can yeah, um, to get rid of it. So I take ten damage. Because um, I didn't want to lose Shore Shark immediately after getting it. Um, my deck is really only good if I have creatures out on the um, out on the battlefield. If uh, I can't uh, get that going, then um, uh, it's almost guaranteed to be a win for my opponent. Go ahead and return Gadrick and um, tap uh, uh, his scavenger. I attack and he blocks with his uh, murderous rider. So Gadrick comes back again. I'm gonna take another five damage here. And Bone Stomper Giant or Bone Crusher Giant uh, deals two damage comes out. Um, I play my uh, Serrated Scorpion. I use Unsubstantiate to send uh, Gadrick back. I don't attack, so I can just defend. Because I believe I can take two HP, but he had another Bone Crusher Giant waiting and uh, finishes me off with a scavenger. So, another loss for the night. I'm down. Next opponent is Red Carpet. And take my first seven cards. Got a lot of uh, creatures I can drop down real fast and real quick. So, this is going to set me up good for my later hands when I start getting mutates. Go ahead and mutate with uh, the C Dasher because I um, uh, need to get a quick card, honestly. I get my Archipelago, which isn't useful right now, but I do like having it in my hand, knowing it's there. Uses Scorching Dragon Fire, kills my uh, Serrated Scorpion, which doesn't do any um, damage to him or give me any life because uh, it was exiled. He throws out a Cartid. I pull the other Archipelago that was in my deck. Um, I decide to give uh, this uh, Idiot on. Idi Idi 
that is so hard to say. I decided to give the philosophy spirit um, unexpected fangs for an extra, um, you know, one damage plus uh, the two lifelink or you know the two uh, HP lifelink, which isn't bad. No attacks. This warden of chain can just stay right there until he gets something better, which he does immediately. Um, I know, say he's kind of being mana screwed right now. Um, he only has two lands out, so his deck hasn't been being nice to him. I play my Dirge Bat straight. I usually do with Dirge Bat because uh, its mutate cost is actually higher than its casting cost. Uh, one of the few mut mutates uh, like that. Uh, he sends out uh, Terror of the Peaks and starts his attack. I go ahead and sacrifice one of my philosophy spirits. And Chittering Harvester was just the card I wanted right there. So now I can take out his Terror of the Peaks and he's forced to sacrifice one of his own. Because it's a creature ability, um, I didn't have to pay three life for targeting Terror of the Peaks. Attack him for another 6 damage. And while he's making his move, uh, why don't you leave a comment and tell me if you'd like to see a video on the deck that I'm using. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe and leave a like as well. Hey, thanks for a while. I was at another Rampart Smasher, so. And a Blight Blade. So now he has a Death, uh, a death Touch creature that uh, can't touch my Chittering Harvester. So I get Typhoid Rats, I throw that out there. Um, just to discourage him from attacking with his Rampart Smashers. And again, he's taking a really long time to think about what he can do. And he throws out another Rampart Smasher. Poor guy must have had all of them up there in his hand. No lands. He gets a 1-1 token down for a Love Struck Beast. <clears throat> he attacks with Blight Blade. I don't know if he... Thought I'd take the bait or not. Thought about it for a second just to get that 2 HP, and I was like, nah. So, pull and eliminate. I go ahead and eliminate his car uh, carotid to get rid of a mana that he can use to cast those rampart smashers. But he has another land that he finally pulled. He throws out the Iro games. And I'm kind of hoping for a land so I can just end this. And there it is. I get it. I can go ahead and deal out all my mutates, which, yeah kind of insult to defeat I guess but uh it has to be done I attack him for seven damage ending the round good game dude good game red carpet and with that victory under my belt I'm gonna have to end the video because it's starting to run long uh, make sure to catch the next episode where I show an interesting strategy that mutation decks can use against Clackbridge trolls. 
I'm Mr. Blue Dot. If you like this content, please uh, subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit the bell, leave a comment. Until next time, have fun out there.